What's the most dangerous job in Britain? Well, think of the industries. Chemical, construction, mining. Well, in fact, it's none of those, not even close. The most dangerous job by a mile is catching fish. Fishing is a very dangerous industry. Your foothold's shifting, it's usually wet, there's water coming in, so you've got an unsteady, unsure base. And then you've got a lot of moving equipment, wires, warps, gears, heavy uh, fishing gear may be swinging because of the boat's swinging. It's an extremely dangerous, hazardous occupation. It's not hard to see why. This can be a hostile environment. But fortunately, the fishermen aren't alone out there. As well as the water, they're surrounded by another ocean, a sea of invisible waves. Radar and radio are just two of the waves these fishermen depend on. Without them, they'd be lost. This is the story of the science of waves, waves that save lives. I've come here to Lou in Cornwall to set a challenge. Can two skippers take a trip back in time and do without the modern electronic gadgets their fishing boats rely on? Why? Well, I'm going to explore with the trawlermen the science they depend on for their livelihoods. And if the worst came to it, their lives. It means getting to grips with the ups and downs and ins and outs of waves, from the ocean to the invention of radio, from shouting to the structure of the universe, the connections will be revealed. Right, time to meet the skippers. Armand Toms and Neil Murray are our two volunteers. I caught up with them on a rare day off. Neil, hi. Hi. How are you? Hi, thank you. You're going to come and have a chat with me then, Armand? Now, you fish by pair trawling, is that right? Yes, that's what, correct. What's pair trawling? Uh, pair trawling is uh, two boats uh, towing uh, a large trawl between them. Bigger net is uh, better for two small boats to tow together. It's more efficient and helps us compete with the bigger boats because we haven't got the power. You have to make sure that both boats are working together, that they're coordinated, the strain is equal on either side to keep the net square and fishing efficiently. It's a very skilled job requiring a lot of cooperation, certainly good communications between the two boats. When we finish one haul, we, we all up and the, it goes aboard one of the boats while the other one shoots its net. And while you do your second tow, you pick the fish up, you gut it, braid it, wash it, put it down below and pack it in ice, ready for uh, coming in and offloading onto the market. I think fishermen find it very hard to imagine what it's like for the families left at home because they're at sea, they're busy, they're fully occupied, they know perfectly well they're safe, there's nothing wrong. For the family at home it is a very long anxious time. I don't think there's any other phrase for it, there's a permanent sort of anxiety, permanent concern. Will the husband be coming home? Will the father of the children be coming home? Nobody actually who doesn't know the commercial fisherman doesn't actually appreciate what being in that sort of job entails. It's something that's in their blood. It is a very dangerous occupation. Nobody can actually determine what the sea is going to do and determine what the natural elements are going to do. It's very exciting at times and lonely at other times. Never knowing what time they'll be back or worrying, knowing what the weather can suddenly whip up a storm and if they're safe. I've come to accept it over the years that I know he's not going to take any unnecessary risks. We've now got mobile phones, so we can keep in contact. You need communications that are going to work when the chips are down. And a mobile phone may be very handy, and you can ring the wife or your friend at the pub and say, get a pint up for me at five o'clock. But 
doesn't replace the ship to shore radio telephone in the proper kit. Two six three nine nine eight. Ship to shore radio telephones are run professionally. Shore stations are monitoring for distress signals. Certain channels are monitored all the time. Well, first we have the VHF and uh, we communicate with other fishing vessels. Um, we also listen out to the Coast Guard for the weather reports. Mm -hmm. right. um, it's, it's very important work for us because we're, we're pair trawling, so we're constantly uh, talking to Armand on the other boat. Yeah. So how do you make sure that you and Armand keep a constant distance apart? Uh, want to? We use the radar for, the, for that. So is that blob there Armand? Yes, yeah, I'll go on there now. That thing over there, GPS, that's a good one. Global Positioning System. It receives messages from satellites 18,000 kilometres away to tell you exactly where you are. The sounder works underneath the boat and can help you detect shoals of fish. Kind of important, that one. The radar sends signals out from the boat and helps you stop bumping into things. The navigator works like the GPS, but from a ground station instead of satellites. And the track plotter plots exactly where you've been and where you're going. And last but definitely not least, at a essential piece of kit for all fishermen. A TV so you don't miss neighbours. Different gizmos but they all have one thing in common. They all work by sending or receiving waves. <laughs>